This is WHAS 11 News. Right now at five, complete domination. The Kentucky Wildcats absolutely rolling over West Virginia on their way to the Elite Eight. Our Kent Spencer is in Cleveland with all the details. Kelsey's tired, but she's got a pep in her step for some <laughs> reason. And U of L looking to follow in Kentucky's footsteps and punch their ticket to the Elite Eight. Our Whitney Harding is in Syracuse with a preview of tonight's big game. And a controversial bill, now law in Indiana, how the Religious Freedom Restoration Act could affect business in the state, even change the college basketball landscape. Good morning, Kentucky, and I'm Kelsey Starks. And I'm Andy Trine, and just about to turn over to 5 a.m. on the button on this Friday morning, and it is 38 degrees out there. Brooke Katz is now checking traffic for us. Any problems developed, she's got you covered. But let's start with meteorologist Brian Shaw. Bit of a cool down folks are dealing a with right bit. now. It is downright chilly. It's going to get worse. It is, unfortunately. For tomorrow morning, it is going to be much colder. Today is going to be uh, unseasonably cool, but we will have some sunshine to start off today. It's just later on in the afternoon and evening, we are going to bring back the chance for some rain showers. And in fact, we might actually get the chance for a couple of flurries to mix in with those rain showers in a few spots before it does start to clear out for us for later on tonight. So all the way down to the 20s for tonight into early tomorrow, but we will have sunny skies. But never fear, it will warm back up. We're going to climb all the way back to near 70 degrees by the middle of next week. So we do have that warmer weather on the way. Here's a look at Max HD radar, which is dry right now. The last of any precipitation has cleared well off to the east at this point. In fact, a lot of our cloud cover has faded away across Kentuckyana, and the cloud cover will continue to stay clear through much of the early part of today until later on this afternoon, we'll start to bring in some patchy clouds and the chance for a few light scattered showers and maybe even a few flurries mixing in with that, especially in southern Indiana where it is expected to be cooler. Here's the Morgan & Morgan HD camera network. This is the view at the Review restaurant and lounge. Clear skies in Louisville right now. Temperatures in the upper 30s around the metro, but we do have several spots that are much, much cooler. Paoli, as it typically is, 26 degrees, 29 in Bedford, mid-30s in central Kentucky, a tad warmer there, Frankfurt and uh, Springfield at 37 right now. We are going to gradually warm up throughout the morning, still sunny until about noontime, where we'll start to bring in some patchy clouds, low 40s around noon, and then we'll top off in the mid-40s for today, mostly cloudy skies by late this afternoon, then we start to bring in a few scattered rain showers for this evening. We'll track that with future casts coming up in a bit. It is 502 right now and heading out this morning. Things looking pretty good on those roadways. Not seeing any significant delays there on Morgan and Morgan HD camera network view from reviews showing 64 right around the third street area. Not seeing any delays for you there. Those roadways in pretty good shape this morning on mobile traffic tracker right now. Things looking good all around the metro. No accidents or incidents to report and things looking good. If you are coming in from southern Indiana along the Kennedy Bridge, no delays. They are still quiet 71 at Zorn Avenue and drive times are up to speed this morning. 71 Snyder to the junction is about a nine minute ride. 64 Snyder to the junction is just about 13 minutes. All right, Brooke, thank you. It is 502 right now. Kentucky's path to perfection is moving onward in shot blocking, slam dunking style. The Wildcats absolutely dominated West Virginia in the Sweet 16. Don't poke the bear, folks. The Mountaineers poke the bear, and they were beaten in every phase of the game. A lot of talk this week about West Virginia's press. Well, you got to score before you can press, and they didn't, so UK was largely unaffected. The Wildcats committed only 10 turnovers. They shot 48% from the field with plenty of dunks and layups. Five Wildcats scored in double figures. An obliteration in Cleveland at the hands of Kentucky. They went at 78 to 39. WHS 11's Kent Spencer is in Cleveland with a wrap up. The only thing in this game that didn't go Kentucky's way, Aaron Harrison dislocated his left ring finger early in the second half. Other than that, Kentucky cruised over West Virginia. They wanted to come into this game and make a statement. They certainly did just that. I didn't want to make a big statement. Um, like I said, I took it personal, and um, I'm just glad we came out with the win. Oh, we were super motivated. Um, just, just, we were just so happy, uh, happy to play and, and, and so excited. And, and plus the, the added added trash talk or whatever that 
they want to say that we're going to be 36 and one and all that. That was that was fuel to the fire. Them coming out talking just made us want to beat them even worse. All we were saying was kill them, beat them by 30 the whole day. He said it when we came in here at halftime, like yo, step on their throats, like don't let them back up, because um, you know, like we know when we're up by that much at halftime, like dudes is going to relax. But like me, Drew, Aaron, um, you know, everybody was in here just like nah, like keep it going, like we're not stopping, we're not, you know. Not, we're going to continue to play hard since we don't play hard enough. Usually we let things go by like that, but you know, that's just that's disrespectful, you know, how hard we work. And it was different just to have something on my left hand when I tried to shoot it. Um, but, I mean, uh, I'm just uh, – I'll figure a way out. I'm, I'm definitely playing Saturdays. And the Mountaineer who did most of the talking, Daxter Miles, did not score a single point in this game. Next up for Kentucky in the lead eight, Notre Dame set for an 849 tip on Saturday night with a trip to the Final Four on the line. Reporting in Cleveland, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11 News. Well, the crowd went wild in Lexington last night. This is some video down uh, near campus last night. Police say about 300 people were along State Street. Police were also there uh, lining the street wearing riot gear. And yes, there were a few small fires set. Uh, they were all small uh, people setting their clothes and backpacks on fire. No couches that we know of. Police did make run one arrest and we were told no one was hurt. So on to the Elite Eight with a Saturday game against Notre Dame. The third seeded Fighting Irish will be the best offensive team Kentucky has seen this season. The two teams tip off Saturday night at 849 with a chance to go to Indy and the Final Four. 506 right now. Louisville trying to join Kentucky in the Elite Eight. The cards tip off tonight against NC State in the Sweet 16. NC State already beat Louisville earlier this season, but the cards are counting on this go round to be a little different. We're just more together, man, because I've, I've been telling people we've been through a lot this year, and I'm pretty sure a lot of teams have, but we, we definitely grew. It's scheduled for around 735. If Louisville wins, they'll play either Oklahoma or Michigan State in the Elite Eight. All these teams playing for a chance to get to Indianapolis for the Final Four, but a new state law in Indiana may be hurting the city's chances of hosting other major events. Our Brooke Hash is live this morning with more on the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which is now making national news, and now the NCAA is swaying in. Brooke? The national, or the NCAA, I should say, is actually looking to probably pull out of Indiana after this year. Now the Final Four and the national championships are set for Indianapolis on April 4th in just about a week's time. The NCAA president, one of several who are actually going and releasing comments saying that they are closely examining the implications of the bill and how it might affect future events, saying they are deeply concerned about how the law would affect their student athletes and employees. Now, gay rights groups worry it will be used by businesses that do not want to provide services for gay couples, calling it discriminatory. The Freedom of Religion bill received overwhelming support, however, in both state houses, with leaders saying it's intended to keep the government from forcing business owners to act against their religious beliefs. A law 19 other states have enacted. Now, other groups are threatening to pull out, like the largest gaming convention in the country, which is Gen Con. Now, as for the Final Four, again, those plans still underway for about a week from uh, today on April 4th. That is still good to go. Fans cannot, uh, or can breathe a sigh of relief for that one. But as far as in the next coming years, this bill could do some severe damage to the state of Indiana and its economy. Brooke Hash, WHAS 11 News. All right, Brooke, thank you. Today, the suspects in the murder of Noriah Miller are due in court for a pretrial conference. Trey Anderson, Michael Dunn Jr., William McLemore, and Demarcus Tram are all facing several charges, including complicity to murder and attempted murder. Police say all four men were present when bullets hit Miller on her family porch last August. Noriah and her mother, Sierra Twyman, were both shot. Twyman survived. A Cincinnati man convicted of using a Jefferson County hotel room for a prostitution ring will be spending the next 15 years behind bars. Christopher Heisel pleaded guilty last November to sex trafficking, fraud and coercion, among other charges. 
Police in Louisville arrested Heisel last April after he drove a woman from Cincinnati to Louisville for a prostitution at the Red Roof Inn on Blairwood Road. The investigation also linked him to the prostitution of many other women in Ohio, Kentucky and elsewhere. Police say he kept the woman locked away in his Cincinnati home. They called it a house of horrors. Well, when you think of tattoo parlor, you probably don't think of a safe place for your children, but a Southern Indiana business is trying to change that image. Tattoo Machine Gun in Jeffersonville is the newest safe place. That's approved business, meaning the business stays open uh, for any, uh, it'll open its doors to any children who are in need. You typically see those signs in McDonald's or Kroger stores. The owner of the Tattoo Machine Gun says that he has a soft spot for kids and he isn't letting his unique business stop him from helping the community. I'm just trying to do my part to uh, squash that negative view and I figured becoming a safe place for children would be a step in the right direction. I think it's going to be great for the community. Um, it's a good, I think it's a good idea. Southern Indiana, about 85% of the kids who go to safe places say they are being abused in their homes. Coordinators for the program say these locations are vital. Well, hi there, folks. Good morning. Here's a look at Futurecast. We'll go hour by hour for you throughout the course of the day. We're going to get cold this morning, even colder than what we already are. Temperatures at about 38 degrees in Louisville. We're expecting to drop down to the mid to low 30s. However, we will start off with mostly sunny skies. We are expecting mostly sunny skies until about noontime, where some cloud cover is going to move in. Temperatures are going to top off in the mid 40s. We're going to have the chance for a few scattered rain showers for later on this afternoon. That'll clear up and temperatures plummet for tonight all the way down to the mid 20s. We will be sunny tomorrow, but really not all that warm as highs are only going to be in the mid to low 40s. We'll start to warm up into Sunday. We are expecting some rain showers though to move in for Sunday night into Monday. Brooke? And things are looking good if you're heading out to work or school this morning. Not seeing any delays out there. You can see I-64 right around the 3rd Street exit ramp. Looking pretty good this morning. No delays showing up out there if you're heading out in the next little bit. On mobile traffic tracker right now, throughout the Metro interstates looking good. Just a heads up for you, though, there is a ramp closure happening this weekend that you'll want to know about. The ramp to I-65 northbound is going to be closed down starting at 9 o'clock tonight. That's going to last until 5 o'clock on Monday morning. This is out in Lebanon Junction. You can detour north Northbound Kentucky 61 to eastbound 245, and then you'll be able to get on I-65 North from there. There will be posted signs for that. 65 looks good all the way down into E-Town, both parkways up to speed as well. And your drive times moving right along this morning. 65 Snyder to downtown is about a 10-minute ride. 65 to Waterson to downtown up to speed there at just about five minutes. Andy and Kelsey. All right, Brooke, thank you. Coming up on 512 right now, Stevie Wonder set to rock the KFC Yum Center tonight, and Louisville Slugger is celebrating with a very special gift. Yeah, Slugger has made what they think is the first ever Braille bat for the singer. The staff at Louisville's own American Printing House for the Blind created the computer file that was used by the laser engraver there. The bat is orange and white, mirroring his album, Songs in the Key of Life, and includes Wonder's name, today's date, and Louisville, Kentucky. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. It is uh, 512 right now. Thanks for starting your Friday with GMK, a feel-good Friday around here. We'll continue with some of those stories and this new information this morning about that deadly plane crash in France. Investigators now saying it is likely a mass murder. What happened inside that cockpit seconds before the impact? And a massive explosion in New York City. Details on the seven alarm blaze. What investigators think caused it? 